The port of Rotterdam is uniquely situated at the confluence of the Rhine and Maas rivers. It has an open connection to the North Sea, without any locks or bridges in between. Its sea route has an impressive draft of up to 25 meters. This explains why Rotterdam is now Europe's largest port and why its harbormaster division has a huge number of ships to serve, both inland vessels and seagoing vessels. The harbormaster strives to be a modern, ambitious, hospitable authority looking for innovation in both regulation and implementation. The harbour master is responsible for order and safety along the sea route. The focus is on four key targets. Smooth, safe, clean and secure. Speed is a must-have in a port area. Delays are costly to the shipping company and the port itself. Proper planning and guidance are vital. Both are managed at the port's HCC, the Harbour Coordination Center. Peter van S is head of traffic planning and operations. Well, I take care of traffic planning and uh, operational work. In short, making sure that ships can leave and enter the port safely. HCC, Oscar Delta, over. We deal with security as well, if an incident should occur. This is managed by operations. In addition to that, we have an incident management center, a bit like the police incident room. Twenty-four hours before a sea vessel enters the port of Rotterdam, it should notify the harbour master and report hazardous chemicals if any are on board. These data are fed into the digital radar image so the controllers can monitor the ship's position and see what it's carrying. Large draft vessels are handled separately. Vessels with a draught of 17.4 meters or more are considered special objects. They can only enter at high tide, so we need special pilots for that. Our seagoing vessels RPA-15 or RPA-16 safely guide the ship to its berth to keep it from running into problems. The time window is limited and so is the number of berths. We at HCC determine the order in which the ships enter, depending on the other traffic of course. The patrol boats are the HCC's eyes and ears. Their physical presence is still important despite all modern electronics and technology. Man and technology work closely together. Automated systems are certainly useful, but our work does not get any easier. Also because we have larger ships and increased traffic to deal with. Compared with 20 years ago, sea ships have become larger, wider and deeper. We are assisted by the Harbour Master Information System to alleviate and facilitate our tasks. To do more with less, that's about the idea. We all work in a customer-oriented way and we like to work with ships. So you're very much aware of what's going on and how high the economic stakes are. We need to streamline processes as much as we can, but without neglecting safety issues. Communication is a key factor here. At the two control centers, traffic is closely monitored and radio communication with the ships is maintained. Again, smooth and safe are two key elements. Ruud Hogesteger is one of the supervisors. I am responsible for the smooth and safe handling of shipping traffic. 
Your main task as a supervisor is monitoring traffic as a whole. We count the number of ships that call at the port of Rotterdam, which totals about 34,000 seagoing vessels, and 133,000 inland ships. The number of ship movements is several times higher, because many sea ships dock at two to three terminals on average before leaving the Rotterdam port area. The moment the ship enters the port, it is contacted by a VTS operator, who guides the ship towards its berth. The first contact, the first impression is decisive. If you are approached in an expert fashion by people telling you in a friendly way what is expected and what should be done, that's good PR for our port. Together with a ship handling division, we make every effort to get the ships in and out as quickly as possible. This time frame is decisive for Rotterdam to retain its competitive position. The larger ships effectively reduce the waterway capacity. And so even more anticipation is required to guide traffic. Further upstream, ships will pass the first bridges and locks. Again, the harbormaster will ensure a safe passage of these vessels. Anneke Teniet is supervisor of the lock and bridge masters. We control the locks and bridges from nine locations. And those nine locations serve a total of 20 bridges and three locks. The first section of the waterway can be reached directly from open sea so dimensional limitations do not apply. The port authority is supposed to ensure a smooth and safe passage. For safety reasons we choose to give water traffic precedence over car traffic. Then again it's important to strike a proper balance in that respect, to prevent the bridge from being open all day. It's the bridge master's job to find that balance. Vessels sailing downstream are given precedence over those sailing upstream. And if the winds are strong, you try to cut waiting time. You open the bridge earlier so the ship can make better time. All bridge masters employed by the port authority are qualified to command large ships, which is necessary to assess the maneuverability of a vessel. It's a great responsibility being a bridge master particularly in this area. Well, there's something special about each and every one of these locations. In fact, I like them all. The harbormaster has set up clear rules to make the port a safe place. Paul Ladeur is transport and environmental safety inspector. He makes sure that the cargo is stowed safely on board, that high-risk containers are stored separately, that tankers unload their cargo into clean storage tanks, and that tank cleaning is done in an environmentally friendly way. Safe and clean are the key words here, without neglecting the smooth. Morning. Port Authority. Thank you. The ship has an obligation to supply a full report of all cargo carried on board. We also make sure that certain chemicals or containers are stored separately and there are certain regulations to be adhered to. Then again, to move things along, if we know that a vessel is about to leave port, we usually decide to refrain from inspecting that vessel. We try not to be like strict policemen who spend all their time enforcing laws and regulations, looking for errors and imposing fines. We're also happy to give advice and encourage people on board to come to us with their questions. If there's a problem, don't hesitate. Just say it. As in any household, a lot of waste can accumulate on a ship. Today, most of the waste handling expenses are included in the harbour dues. 
During our onboard checks, we try to encourage the crew to hand in their waste instead of chucking it over the side at sea, which used to be common practice. The Harbour Master Division enforces harbour rules and regulations, but is also actively involved in formulating, and even more so in simplifying these rules, so that visiting ships will know what to do, and Rotterdam remains a clean and safe port. Dirk Verbeek is legislation and enforcement councillor. It's a jumble of shipping traffic, as well as other activities. Also, on board the vessels, activities may take place that carry a certain amount of risk, like uh, cleaning the holds of a tanker. So, rules are definitely required here. You need rules. If we didn't have such rules in place, then we would have frequent incidents to deal with. And it does work. It works. We're a safe port and we intend to remain one. I'm confident there's not a single port in the world that enforces its rules more strictly than the port of Rotterdam. Vessels calling at our port know they need to run a tight ship indeed. Clean means clean water, clean vessels, clean air, clean riverbanks and clean keys. No one wishes to live or work around polluted port areas and industries will shun such places too. All ships particularly those carrying noxious or hazardous materials, have to meet strict regulations. A vast port and industrial area such as Rotterdam needs extensive security measures. A well-secured port is vital. The harbour master has also been appointed port security officer. He maintains the port security law by testing and certifying security plans and through inspection. Reinhard Gunst is in charge of port security. His main tool is the ISPS code, the International Ship and Port Facility Security Code. In practice this means that we take preventive measures to ensure that no traffic of persons and cargo can take place unmonitored between the ships and the keys. We want to prevent a vessel from being used for terrorist purposes as well as from becoming a terrorist target itself, which is not unthinkable. The ISPS code needs to be respected but should not become an obstacle to port management activities. That's why we are actively engaged in working out simplified methods in situations where we feel procedures have become too sluggish. The economic stakes are high, so continuity is essential here. The ISPS code helps to safeguard continuity by minimizing the risk of terrorist interference. We want to have a better security system in place than an export, so terrorists will rather have to go at them than at us. It's a kind of quality stamp, you might say. Well, we've seen a transformation from the harbour master from an authoritarian structure to a highly transparent and flexible organisation with a strong focus on the customer. And I feel that's of vital importance. It's a great job and I'm really proud working here. Yeah, I do feel a sense of pride. I'm not a local, but I enjoy patrolling this area. And if I see the awe on the faces of people watching those big ships come in, that gives me tremendous satisfaction. This is a great thing. We're Europe's largest port and everyone is proud to work here. It's a wonderful place to be. I really mean that. 